Well, if you've gone to the grocery store lately, you may have run into this empty shelves. Yeah, hundreds of you responded to our call on Facebook to share what you're seeing and the photos you sent really show this is a widespread issue. I couldn't even get bread earlier today. I went to the grocery store like right each day this week to try and get it out of stock. So many shelves completely empty and with another storm coming in at the end of a year here where once in a lifetime weather events seem to happen every month. The new PBS documentary is exploring the effects of human activity on the environment. Joining us now, the narrator of Earth Emergency. You may be familiar with some of his other work, actor Richard Gere. Richard, good morning. It's, it's great to see you. Boy, when you look back hey, really? at this year and you go back to February, to the winter storm in Texas, and you look at the tornadoes we just had in Kentucky and across other parts of the, the Midwest, put in some hurricanes in there, forest fires, the wildfires out west. This seems like the perfect time for this documentary. So what did you want to say in this piece for PBS? Well, you know, it, a friend came to me and uh, said he was making this documentary. And I said, what, what, what's the point? I mean, we all, most of us are concerned about climate. And he said, well, look, I don't think people realize that the earth is heating up much faster than any of the models would indicate. And I think this is an attempt to explain why, and it's really around the concept of feedback loops, that when the earth in fact is heating, you know, the hottest years in, in the last thousands, many thousands of years on, on earth, the hottest years are since 2000. So we are in this hyper heating uh, mode right now. Um, but what we're seeing is as the earth heats up, it kicks in other systems, these feedback loops that make it heat even faster. Um, and so we're, we're getting to a tipping point much quicker than any of the models would have indicated. There's no question about it, Richard. And as you know, you look at a younger generation, you just look at polling and their awareness and their concern about climate change is exponentially higher uh, than older generations. So there is progress being made in awareness and maybe this new generation takes the baton, but how do you use your voice and your platform to break through? Because so many people have said what you're saying for so long. How do you punch through to all the people who need to hear this? I don't know. Look, the, the, <laughs> this, this young girl, this extraordinary girl, Greta Thunberg, woke everyone up that there was this teenage girl who was able to speak with such passion and eloquence about responsibility and sanity. Um, I think she was speaking for the 7.8 billion people on this planet who, uh, who who rely on a healthy planet. And our children and our grandchildren, great-grandchildren will rely on this planet. The planet's not going to be here unless we change radically what we're doing. We have to stop with the fossil fuels. We have to stop. It's as simple as that. If we don't, if we continue to cut down our old growth trees, this planet will heat up and people will die in the millions. And most of the species on this planet will be gone. That's a fact. Now, why we don't pay attention to that? Why we have politicians who don't pay attention to that? Why do we don't hold them responsible? Why don't we elect people who take this seriously? Um, economy doesn't mean much if there's no planet. Economy doesn't mean much when there's no healthy place for us to live on this planet. So kind of the silly choices that are being made to maintain a status quo and using fossil fuels, for instance, and cutting down our forests all over the planet uh, is a dead end. Richard, it's Cathy Kay here. It's a super difficult story to tell and to engage audiences with. One of the ways that we found when we tried to talk about it on television is if you have something concrete, something that people can visualize. So could you describe one of those feedback loops for us, whether it's in the forests or in the permafrost? What is it that is actually taking place? At yeah, the well, the permafrost is probably the easiest. I mean, there's 100 feet of snow, which is frozen. And as the Earth uh, heats up, that permafrost melts. There's an enormous amount of CO2 and methane that is released that would not have been released otherwise. And of course, when that CO2 and methane enter the atmosphere, it creates more of a greenhouse effect and radically speeds up the process of the heating of this planet. 
That's the simplest one to understand. But these are very complex things, and, and as any scientist uh, will tell you in this field, and, and in the documentary they speak eloquently about this, the, the, the climate and the, the ecology of this planet is incredibly complex. Uh, but this idea of feedback loops is something that is radically changing our understanding of how quickly uh, we're getting to a tipping point. Hey, Richard, good morning. Jonathan Lemire. So much of this, as you just outlined, is so big, right? And seems to need government action, the United States, China, India, whoever it might be. But what lessons can people watching at home just in their everyday lives take? We've all got the recycling bins outside. But beyond that, what can people do to feel like they can make a difference, even small, that could add up to combat climate change? Well, the biggest thing you can do is elect people who take it seriously. Uh, this has to come from government side. Unfortunately, we had a president for four years who pulled us out of the Paris Climate Accords. Uh, that was a huge blow to the environmental community. Um, the U.S. is always expected to be a leader in these things. And when we pulled out, I think it uh, took the oxygen uh, out of the movement for a while. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing. Certainly, we, we, we know we can't cut down old growth trees. Uh, this is the basic, um, you know, one of the scientists in this program, he talks about trying to create a technology, a machine that will help uh, take the carbon out of and the CO2 out of the air. And everything they invent is basically a tree. And we have our trees. Mm. We still have 5% of the old growth trees on this planet. We can't cut them down. That's our lungs. Uh, so that's the most important thing. But what we can do, elect people who will take this seriously and hold them so accountable. Richard, before I, yeah, no question. How do you, what gives you hope as you look out now on the horizon here? We talked about this younger generation that's taking this much more seriously than I older see it generations there. did and giving it the urgency. Yeah, what's the, what gives you hope? No, I see it. I see it there. Old guys like me, and you're almost as old as I am. Not quite. <laughs> as old. Knocking on the door. Uh, us old guys are on the other side of things, and we are in many ways stuck in the status quo. Young young people aren't. They're looking to their own futures, and they're seeing this planet heat up and destroy itself. Uh, we got no other home. This is it, and they see that their home is being destroyed and fouled. And uh, I do look to them. I look to them to be the power that will elect responsible people to run governments all over the planet. I mean, Greta Thunberg is such a such an enlightened creature and so inspiring. The Dalai Lama, incredibly inspired by her. Richard Gere, the Earth Emergency. Pro